Tungasugi. That is how you welcome someone in the Inuktitut language, which is spoken primarily in the Arctic Circle above the 60th parallel. In this lesson, we will discuss parallel in, parallel out registers. You might also hear them called parallel registers or just registers. Although those last terms should be more specific, they usually refer to a register with just the ability to load in and take out data in parallel without any serial operations. This lesson will be shown entirely in LogicWorks, but there are a couple of slides available which summarize the same points. First, let's look at the completed device. This example uses four bits, but everything discussed can be extended to any number of bits. The input data bits are named I, and the output data bits are named Q. There is an active low clear switch, which allows us to asynchronously reset all of the stored bits to zero. As with every register, it needs to be connected to a clock. The final input is the active high enable. When EN equals one, the register is allowed to change values on a positive clock edge. When EN equals zero, the register cannot change values. Let's demonstrate the various functions. First, we can clear all the data by simply flipping the clear switch. You see the output goes to all zeros. Now let's load in data. I need to deactivate the clear input, choose a value to write into the register, let's pick nine, and then enable the register. The output does not change immediately, but must wait for a positive clock edge. I can pick another input value, let's say two. On the next positive edge, the output updates. When used in this manner, with the enable signal always active, this register holds memory for only a very brief time, one clock cycle. This could be useful for an application that needs a signal held for one full clock cycle, rather than even more rapid changes. We saw examples of that in the Mila machines designed previously. It could also be useful for synchronizing various input signals. In the shown example, all four input bits come from one device, this hex keyboard. But it is not uncommon to have data arriving from different sources. For example, maybe three of the bits are computed from an adder, and the fourth bit is the user's choice to negate the result. In that situation, the inputs may arrive at different times, but the Q output signals will change simultaneously. Well, as close to simultaneous as we can get. But the primary use of this register is holding memory for longer periods of time. That is where disabling the circuit becomes useful. If I reset EN to zero, I can change the input signals to any value, and it doesn't matter. The output value remains at two. This means the flip-flops within the register are locked into their current states of 0, 0, 1, 0. It will hold this memory for as long as power is connected and EN equals zero. If I ever want to write new data into this register, I am not required to flip the clear switch. I can simply choose the new value, enable the register, wait until it is clocked in, then disable the register. Now that new value is held in memory. The function of the circuit is simple and the underlying circuit is simple. We will now look at two internal designs that would accomplish this function. Here is the first design. The heart of a register is flip-flops. With four bits, we need four flip-flops. In most registers, you will see D flip-flops. This is because we rarely need the toggle operation. The register bits simply mirror the input data. One clear signal is connected to all of the D flip-flops reset ports. One clock signal is connected to all of the flip-flops clock ports, but not directly. This AND gate is what allows us to control when the register is enabled. When EN equals zero, the AND gate always outputs zero regardless of what the clock is doing. Because no positive edge passes through this wire, 
none of the D flip-flops can change. The register is disabled. But when EN equals 1, the AND gate output matches the clock. So the flip-flops can change on every positive edge. The register is enabled. To demonstrate loading in new data, I'll change the inputs to 0, 0, 1, 1. Then I'll enable the register. On the next positive edge, the outputs update accordingly. This design works, but it is not preferred. The issue is this AND gate. Because of the propagation delay through that gate, these flip-flops actually change values a short time after the positive edge. In other words, the register is not synchronous with the system clock. This could cause issues if multiple registers need to work together to accomplish a task. Ideally, all registers in a system change states simultaneously. This second design fixes that problem. Notice how this clock is directly connected to each of the flip-flops. No gates in between. How does this work then? How can we unenable the register? The answer is summarized by the naming of this switch, load slash hold prime. When the signal is zero, that means hold is the operation. This 4-bit MUX device is told to choose the B values. What are the B values? The same signals that the flip-flops currently hold. For example, flip-flop zero outputs signal Q0 which feeds back around to the MUX and then is selected by the MUX to pass in as the same flip-flop's next input. So, at the next clock cycle, the flip-flop does update, but it is updated with the same value it held before. Every one of these flip-flops is caught in the same merry-go-round as long as hold mode is selected. But, once we flip the switch to 1, load mode is selected. Now the MUX selects the new data in. On the next clock cycle, this data in overwrites the bits that were previously held in each flip-flop. As a result, this load slash hold prime input signal is the same as the enable signal discussed previously. One thing to note is that I purposely switched the order of the naming of the bits. Typically, we have seen bit 3 up top and bit zero down below. That was to maintain the order of bit weights that align with the hex keyboards. So why did I switch them here? To emphasize that register values don't necessarily represent numbers. They certainly could hold a four bit number like decimal nine, but they aren't required to. One bit could be the instruction to turn on a light, another to turn off a speaker, another to activate a data writing operation, and so on. A register just holds data in memory. It is up to you as the designer to decide what that data represents. If you are using this register to hold a 4-bit number, it just might be the case that the most significant bit is held in Q0. Either of the two internal designs discussed here could be used to build the 4-bit parallel-in, parallel-out register with an enable port. The second design is preferred because no delay is introduced to the clock signal. Each of these simple patterns could be extended to any number of bits, or you could combine devices. For example, a 16-bit register could be made by lining up four 4-bit registers and connecting all of them to the same clock and clear inputs.